All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are Maritime Colors and RB Studio based here in New Brunswick, Canada. And I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. And this is a channel where we share our love for felting, natural dyes through tutorials and workshops. I'm your host, Renata Brutez, and tonight's class is a Valentine's special class. And we will learn how to make those felted bunting flags they're really fun to make and um, we we'll have a template that will be available down below and you learn how to make all those flags as well a variation of those and how to apply tax that's a very simple tutorial it's great for beginners and it's also fun to make one of those all right so for tonight's class you need uh, a felting needle which it can be either through uh, a felting uh, a multi needle like this or just a single one if you have one of those it's fine uh, the one that I'll be using tonight is a 38 gauge but really any one any any needle you have it's great it's fine uh, we will be using as well um, our felting mat which is really great for uh, basically any felting project and that's the one that we're gonna be using uh, tonight uh, this is a great uh, just a high density uh, foam which is great and on the bottom I'm using another type of felting mat which is this wool felted mat here which is a great eco-friendly option and I'm just using this on top just because it's to make things easier for you to see with the black background but you can use either of those I'm also gonna be using uh, just a pair of scissors anything you have available it's fine and a darning needle or a needle that has a big eye so we can actually uh, put a twine through it and um, also some twine so the twine is basically any twine you have it um, I actually recommend it to use a little bit finer than this one that I have it here um, but anything works as well so I guess that's pretty much it oh actually uh, we also gonna be needing um, our template so this template is available uh, just down below there is a description there on the description there is a link to it so we'll be learning how to do two different kinds of flags tonight uh, they all have a one-to-one -one scale so that's the real scale that you will be uh, using it and this is all printable for you so you have that as well as just the guideline for you uh, the lettering that we are using tonight so those are just down below in the description don't forget to get those and i think that's pretty much it oh and of course we cannot forget about uh, our fleece the fleece that we're using tonight is a merino wool uh, but basically if you have any wool available that's dyed already it's great to to use and merino is just great because it felt really fast uh, but you can also uh, if you have access to any other type of fleece, a corridor or any other felting, uh, needle felting fleece, it's great as well. So those are the ones that I'm going to be using tonight. And other than that, I hope you join me and stay with me along the way. Uh, we try to make short, uh, not um, stay with the mark with the maximum an hour. And of course, I'll be answering questions if, as they come along and let me know if you have any questions. Other than that, thank you so much for joining us and we'll start it now. Uh, a couple things that I want to say. Uh, we also have a single uh, needle uh, felting tool. That's the one that I'm going to be using it tonight. They are very simple to use. They are also available on our website. Uh, but it's just to make things easier and faster for us I like to use those handles and they are great for for it so basically uh, with our template I'm just gonna grab it here again 
So we'll start to make the triangular shape first. Uh, this triangular shape is just great for our uh, type of template because it's very simple. Uh, if you have one of our kits, it's just easy uh, the way the way it comes because it's just a row and it comes about this size in length and also in width. So it's a very similar size than our uh, template. But basically what we're going to be doing it is kind of mm -hmm. folding it just about that and folding it again creating like a triangle shape. I'm going to fold like it four times and uh, we'll have a similar triangle shape that we are wanting to achieve here. So just one more time here and that's it. You can either pull it just like that and then you just wrap it around and you have yourself made a, a nice and easy triangle. I'm just gonna put here our template aside. So the template we're keeping just as a reference, the size is supposed to be a two by two inches, but basically uh, it's whatever size you wanna make. I just like the sizes because it makes things uh, a little bit easier to work with as well. It's just simple and faster as well. So we have our template there. I'm not going to go through all the procedures for felting, but if you are new to needle felting, I definitely recommend you to watch one of our last year's um, Valentine's uh, tutorial, which I really go through all the process of felting as well as how to proceed with uh, the way to poke uh, in order to don't break your needle. So what I'm basically doing, I'm just backing in going in and out in the same angle. It doesn't need to be too strong. You see it goes really easy and you will poke all around really just to make sure that you have that you added your needle all the way. So basically if I'm going in on a vertical direction I need to go out in the same direction and if I'm going on the 45 or 30 I also living and then going out in the same just in the same angle all right so uh, you notice here that I just flipped my work because basically when you start to poke around um, for a couple seconds in certain region and the wool tends to get stick to the mat and we don't want it to to get that too to stick to it because otherwise it will be hard for us to really uh, to work our project there all right so um, yeah so just keep going let me know if you have any questions I'll be happy to answer those I'm just switching here to a multi so you can kind of see how it works you see that it gets really, the job done, it gets way faster than with the single one, of course, because there is eight in there instead of one. And in this tool, uh, particularly any size of tool can, uh, any size of needle can go in it, which makes things really helpful as well. So as you can see here, uh, it, it is already getting into shape. So I'm now moving uh, just to the edges to get a, a better and a straight edge as well. So basically what I'm doing, I'm keeping again the same angle and going in and out and always keeping my project in here on the top of my mat. I'm never gonna be holding, I mean, doing like this, um, only if there is some really, uh, the edge is really small or it's really fine to be working that way. Uh, we always recommend that you do your edges, um, hopefully, uh, on top of the mat. Because this is just a way to prevent any accidents. Because um, if you ever felt before, you know how it is, right? So 
it is this needle is very sharp so I always uh, say please really pay attention to what you're doing it and where is where your fingers are um, and where um, the needle is so always keep that in mind um, and again just kind of trying to be here as consistent as I can get and you can already hopefully already see it uh, what's going on here I already have a better shape um, than we will start with but with the technique that I was showing you just to to have this folded a couple times um, to begin with really helps us out to get to the shape that we want in here so I'm just bringing back here our um, our template just make sure that we have the same sign as you can see here it's very close to what it is um, so I'm just going to continue doing a little more on this guy here and um, yeah let me know if you have any questions or where you're watching this from I would love to hear it and the fun thing with those shapes they're simple shapes they're very uh, a good way to start um, a felting uh, project uh, if you're starting in there it's a great beginners project as well as um, give you many different possibilities um, learning just the basic shapes you can do many different things here all right so this is a mean pretty close to uh, of course you can work a little more and um, to get a little bit more thick but it's already holding it so it's you know a little bit on the soft side but it's getting there um, but just for the purpose of our class today I'm just gonna start to to kind of move along um, I have another one that I made it um, as you can see it's a little bit more um, solid I would say it's just a little bit not too thick but it is what it is um, and then as you get felting and poking in in more directions for a longer period of time this will start to get you know harder and harder and that's what we want to see it uh, but this is good for what I want to show you anyway so we're gonna keep that way so what we're gonna do now I'm I'm probably gonna move on to the next stage so we will we'll apply and then you can pick the color really the color that you like and you feel that's gonna be a, a nice uh, contrast color I think that probably that's a lime green something that you want to have some contrast right it can either do with probably something purple darker or even the blue it might be okay or a red a red also works but I, I'm feeling yeah I'm feeling purple today so I think that's what I'm gonna be using it so to apply um, the lettering so the lettering is, is gonna be a similar size than what we're looking here um, I already put some pre-made um, messages that if you like to have those but you can feel free to really do whatever you want to do it because that's your project as well so um, I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do like a little axe there so you have an idea uh, of size and a couple of things that I like to do for that and I'm sorry I didn't mention that before I like to work with a sharpie and in this a sharpie or um, those um, sewing uh, pens they kind of like disappear um, but either way whatever you have there even like just a Crayola type of like marker that's fine too is I just to me I think it's just easier if I kind of pencil down or just mark a little bit before instead I'm just trying to move the face around so like I said I'm just gonna do like a little axe in there so 
bear in mind that basically so that's the two inches so it's probably going to be about an inch in point two an inch and a half uh, depending on the the font that you use it so it's basically don't need to be like too precious about it but like for an axe for example you can definitely use a ruler and just to make things easier but first i really gonna just find my center there so we kind of have like about in here so that's kind of a and i just mark i don't actually mark at the first i just kind of like a felt in there so i know that's my uh center point and in here as well it's just yeah about there okay so i now i know this is my center point so from there i can either just start to write down uh, any letter i like um you can either if you want to be a precise as you like again if it's just gonna be about an inch i would say no more than an inch like a point three or an inch point two um i would just go and try to find you know give a little bit space in there and about here i would say i think that's kind of like that so and then you can either just eyeball it or you if you want to be precise just grab your ruler or really whatever you have um close and then just be just doesn't have to be like too much can even just be like a little there we go so you have an axe there and i'm gonna move again things around and with your uh, fleece, really to make those letters takes very little, as you can see here. So this is very, very fine. I'm just gonna pull it apart just like that. And I like to kind of just go on my hand and twist for a bit. So you have an idea how thick it is. And I started from one point and really attach it there. And then from there, I will just uh, pull it just very lightly and then start to felt on top. So you basically just attaching that fiber and then following the path you created with your pen or pencil or whatever you have there. All right, so I'm just gonna be quick there. And if you have any access to, don't worry about it because as we start to really poke, things are just gonna be, you know, getting settled there. And then if you have an extra two, you could either come back and just do to get, um, the same uh, thickness because as you can see here here's a little bit um, just a little bit thick that the that at the beginning there so I'm just going back and adding a little more all right so with this I can either pull it off or I can actually continue here just to kind of creating the other side, the other leg there. And again, just take very little again, and that's basically all you need there. And place it again, and there is a little too much there you can just go back
so as you can see here you can probably work a little more and even though if you feel that you just started and um, something is wrong the lie the line is just not where you want it to be it's fine that's the greatest thing about the needle felting um, just the needle felting in general because you can just pull it apart and move things around just to get to the place that you really want to be and you can tweak as you go too so so yeah so you you i think you kind of got the idea um of course you can be as precise as you like or you can just be like you can definitely see this is an X, so which is good. So I still have like a lot of straight, like you can straight it up a little bit. Again, like I don't recommend to really be holding it like I'm holding now, but I can also share a little trick if you ever need to do this, especially for the uh, the edges. A good way to do it without um, really hurting yourself. It's one. Um, you can make yourself or uh, you can buy those we also have available at the store um, but you can make yourself a little holder and that's a made with leather so that's really uh, good and really will protect your fingers so you can hold things and you can really work around there without having any trouble and you can really get those edges straight or if you don't have a way to get those it's fine you can also make a hack at home and you can either get a piece of paper or just like a cardboard i'm just going to be using this and really making a little sandwich just like this so this way you holding so your fingers are away from the needle but you're still able to hold things and get where you want it to be without having to cause any accidents and then as you can see here you can get um, also use this as a guideline to get your straight lines Yeah, I really like this because you can get um, straight and you can also get a good consistency at the edge as you really just um, pressuring and making sure that everything is on the same thickness as well um, align with the line that you're kind of using as a guide. So that really helps. All right, so um, thank you so much for those who are joining us tonight. Uh, don't forget to please like, and if you like to watch more videos like this, uh, we'll be hopefully posting uh, on, a, on a more consistent uh, schedule again. Um, don't forget to subscribe, and if you like, we'll be very, very uh, nice of you. I really appreciate it, um, and that also helps uh, my channel. So don't forget to like, uh, even though if you have to, to leave. <laughs> All right, so um, we are pretty much done. I'm just gonna finish up this part here for the triangular flag. And you see how straight is now, right? It's very different than it was before. So I'm gonna leave this one here. And we're gonna move to the next one. So the next one will be the kind of like a double pointed um, flag there. And again, we'll be using it our, um, let me see here. Yeah, so we're gonna be using uh, our template again. And uh, we're just picking this uh, nice uh, greenish, bluish color. And for this guy, we're going to do a little bit different. Uh, instead, we fold in an angle to create the triangle. We're actually going 
just as a regular um, square and I'm gonna fold one and then just kind of make sure you have your twice and three so three times it's more than enough there and it should be great so you can even just pull it apart like this and you fold it again and you have a very nice square just right there um so yeah we're gonna do the same way that we were doing before we're gonna start just to poke around make sure that you're going in all directions and all sides and we're covering everything And every couple seconds, I will flip my project so we won't get it is stuck in there. Again, go back there. To make sure that I'm actually going uh, everywhere that I need to go, I like to create like a system so I go back and forth in line but it's really up to you i found that that really um works for me so i'm just sharing what i think that works and i think that's easier some people just go in random directions but it's up to you so now i'm just kind of going around and just doing a little loop there make sure that i have all of that And I will do one more time on this process again. And I will move then to the single tool. And then I where I can really start to get shape to things. So so one side in here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make as straight as possible right here, and the other side I will come just in the center to create those um, triangular shapes there. All right, so I'm gonna use the hack again, my cardboard, so things are gonna be easier for us to try to straight things out. And you apply just a light pressure to make sure everything is going down in the same length. All right, I'll flip again. Just right there. You see, it's, I just really like this uh, hack because it's just, you have kind of a guideline for you there that make things really nice and straight. And of course, like you can go back and fix things if you need to be. And um, you get a very, very uh, well felted edge there. And one more edge right there. I just want to remind the people who are just joining us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you have any questions, uh, if you like to, I uh, just post it on the on the live chat there. Let me know. I'm here to really to share and to answer any questions you have. Um, we are just completing our um, second bunting flag. And we are doing our second variation, which is like a double pointed flag. And then you see it's really nice and straight there. And like I said, like you're learning simple shapes like this, it's just a, it's just 
a good way to start and you can do so many things with this um, this is just for the sake of the example we are just doing um, the flags but you can do brooches like this you can do like magnets um, just a fun way to start felting and getting your hands on it and really trying things so now that I have all the three um, nicely done edges I'm gonna start to poke here in the center and again it's as precise as you like to be or not um, I'm just gonna double check again we have about two inches which is fine I'll probably a little less but that's that's great um, if you really want to be precise you can just get your middle there which is about here which is exactly where I was doing it and just start to poke poke there so we'll start to create this um, the pointers that we were trying we're hoping to the double point there so um, keep going and I know it seems a little funny right now but it's okay we're gonna start to work on um, the points um, just to get a pointed shape a better pointed shape there but first we really need to get this fixed so we can work from the from the other sides all right so I think that we're gonna do Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Sarah, we'll definitely, I'm going to show you really quick for you how to fold a triangle. Um, okay, so we stop in a good point right here. And thanks for your comment. Um, so basically the triangle, um, if you have a piece of roving about this, um, just about this length or about this width here, because that's what you kind of like going for you are gonna do an angle about a 45, right? Just remember when you were folding um, those uh, paper origami things. So here it's just your um, just your base and then we're gonna fold a uh, kind of 45 in here. So I'm going this way. And then you kinda already have a triangle here. Hopefully you can see right there and and then I'm folding on again on the other side just like this and you kind of creating a triangle there again just make sure that we got on camera um, I'm just starting with my base I'm gonna fold on one side and the angle of 45 and then I will fold again. And then you have your triangle right there. And because I already fold one twice uh, with the, I will gonna fold one more time. And that really will depend the amount of times that we are folding. It will depend uh, how thick is your wool. For this row vein, I like to fold uh, three or four times, depending on uh, the size uh, that I wanted to achieve. And then also just make sure everything is uniform. So either you can stop like with three, but if you feel that is a little fine of wool, you can fold one more time. And then once you achieve that, which is your uh, triangle shape, you can just, just pull it apart just like that and then this edge here the the rest just what was left over you come and then fold just a straight line so you have that base of your triangle very nicely uh, done and just a clean edge right there yeah so that's how we fold the triangle I hope um, you got that Sarah thank you um, so we're going back here to our um, just a square um, the double pointed flag we got like a two little legs just like that 
and again that's the just finding the center first is an important step there and make sure that you have that straight so we can basically now start to work on the edges so in here and that's the basically the same thing on the other side as well so we just make sure that we're fighting those uh the center points there first and then we will we'll go back to it again just the same way find uh, if you have something uh, like a little holder you can do that or again just don't forget your friend there <laughs> your cardboard uh, holder and then you work your way uh, take your time make sure though you got everything straight sometimes you need to uh, switch uh, positions a little more so we'll make sure that we have the nice grip there all right so do you guys want to choose um what color can i use for the lettering i have a couple colors here i have red and of course i have the burgundy kind of purpley color i have this lime yellow and i have blue so let me know in the comments if you like to pick a color so i can uh, do it there or if not i'm just gonna do it on the top of my head So I'm just going to remove for a second so I can show you how it's been. So, and again, if you don't feel comfortable with this, it's fine too. So you can just keep working on the mat just like that. So I think that we got similar shape and of course with felting really you as much as you put into it is, is as much as you kind of get as a result so um, we're just doing as for a demo here uh, I could definitely be way more precise and be working um, and then I'll be a couple hours here but to make perfect but that's the good thing about felting, it's just addictive and you kind of just want to make sure that you got right, but um, just have fun, don't stress about it. All right, I think we got pretty close. I will bring here, so that's my, my template right there. Yeah, yellow, it's a good idea. I think uh, we'll go with that, Sarah. Thank you for uh, your comment. That's a great, great thing. Okay, so that's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. As you would felt and get things a little bit uh, thicker, you could def you can, can probably uh, get a little smaller there, but it works for our example here. Um, so then uh, what we're going to do, we're going to pick um, the color, we're going to do some yellow. And like I said, um, with the template that you can download it, you can just use the reference. Um, I just find that's easier that way. Or uh, if you like to pick any, really any um, font that you find that's fun, you can definitely use that too. I always have my cell phone with me or just the computer and just use the reference. Um, again, with a flag like this that's about two inches, you want to go probably work in the area that doesn't go closer to the edges too much. So I would say about 1.2 inches, I think that's a safe um, size to work with. and. Again, I'm using my Sharpie, but basically you can use any marker, anything you wanted, because really it won't matter because you won't show there because uh, all the wool is going to be covering. 
All right, so I think I'm gonna do a O, so I'm gonna do like X O. Um, again, you can use as a reference, um, or if you have a ruler with you, I'm gonna say I'm gonna use that's my base, and then from here I have you know like 1.56, 1.7, but I would say about here and about here would be our safe spot to work with. Of course, another thing that you need to keep in mind, my flags are a little bit, um, they are not exactly the same size, but that's a good thing about felting too. You can stick a little bit, you can just make a little bigger, just kind of stretchy, and then you can get there. So that's another thing to really have in mind, especially if you're working with those bunting flags. They have more than one things. I would say, Keep in mind that uh, the same size for all your lettering, that's the best way to go. I'm seeing here that, you know, pretty close, they already put it there. So maybe kind of a little bit in here and in here. And then I can work just, I'm just gonna draft in here. And then we have ourselves an O there. Again, with our uh, fleece here, very little. This probably will you will get me all the way through and even have um, a little bit extra there. So I will start again very close to a starting point and really poke a couple times there. So at least there you have uh, secure on this side. And from there you kind of guide use as your um, use your hand as a guide and you just slightly um, move the fleece there is no pressure here uh, on the hand that's holding the fleece just basically guiding and make sure that i'm kind of following through and having uh, this marker that's actually you can see it it's really helpful And like I said, it's going to be covered, so you won't see it. And another thing too, when you basically, when you're doing your lettering, especially when applying the lettering, I try to poke not too much on a vertical angle, not a 90 degree, but more, more like a 45, like a 60. And the reason why is I don't want to have the yellow poking on the other side. The first one, it's kind of poked already because I really want to make sure they were attached to each other. But I will show you how to fix if you ever actually get the whole thing through it. Um, it's just, if you were starting doing this at the beginning, it will save you some time so you don't have to go back and fix everything there. But yeah, but just keep in mind, just being a little bit more um, with your angle, just trying to do like a 45 or even like, you know, a little bit, you know, more like uh, close to 30 degrees. So you make sure that that we're doing this right and we don't have to really come back and do that so i did my first round and i already noticed in here there is a little bit more here than the bottom so because i have extra i can always come back here and filling up the parts that i feel that it's a little bit shy there so that's what i'm gonna do So you can just pull it, um, it should be fine. Okay, so So I just want to make sure there is nothing poking around, but it, there is a little bit, but it's not like something to worry about it. But if it was a lot, 
you can either go back on this end if there is um, the end and not supposed to to have anything and is to poke again in the 45 angle so you can get this back and keep between the layers so you kind of hide you just hide what you want to hide and also help with the felting so you make sure everything it's hidden there and um and it just looks a better finishing and that's how i would like to do it anyway um and in here again it's not perfect but it's just another of those that you have to really take your time doing it and you just add a little more and if you want to take a little more you basically don't worry about it removing it but really just focusing on getting um, poking on the areas that you want to have smaller so as much as you poke as much um, fiber will go between the other fibers and entangle and then you get smaller and smaller so that's basically how it works so we got a little O there and then we have our X and of course to make those more like the same size you can definitely keep going and then just keep working on your edges there and make sure that you have a smaller bunting flag but I think for this for what we are doing today which is basically we're just learning the shapes and uh, make sure that we got all this covered first um, and also just build, assembling the how to assemble the flag in a way that's not going to be glued uh, and you be able to really um, adding or removing is just in a simple way so let me know if you have any questions uh, or anything that comes to your mind so with those two so what we're gonna do uh, we're just gonna create kind of a, a little flag there um, let me just grab um, I have a pre-cutted kind of a twine there um, this is I don't know let me just to see how many inches are here I think it's about 30 inches it's probably a little bit too long but depending what you do like you can add as much or as a little there like this one we did it before um, is probably it's 20 inches so that's a good size and you can fit up to I mean you can fit like way more than this but it's just um, I like those guys and and the way we're gonna apply it so we're gonna be attaching them so the twine here really go through it the whole felting the whole felted piece they don't go under or you know they don't go behind they are not glued they are basically just sewn um, and that's why I like it because both sides are very clean so even if the flag just you know go to the other side or something like that you don't actually see uh, a seam or anything so that's why I like that version so to make those are very simple is just you need to get basically a darning needle or a needle that has a big eye so it can be like something that you can definitely fit it um, the twine and that's why I was working with the darning needle um, which I feel that's easier um, some darning needles they have the a little bit more sharp I like those so it's up to you whatever you have available here so that's my darning needle and um, that is the one with the big eye I think I, I I'll try with the big eye first so And of course it will depend how thick is your twine my twine is probably a little bit too thick for this guy okay and you can you can do this with really anything any string you have around your house uh, even ribbon if you like I like twines or a string or something like that or a, a piece of yarn or whatever you have just because it's um, 
it's easy to work with and I think it, it's prettier too. So basically you have your darning needle there just threaded and then you pick your edge you start it from one side and it might be a little bit difficult at the beginning especially uh, if your edge is too felted mine this one is actually um, not that felt I mean it is felted but it's not uh, as hard as I, I like to be but you see that it goes really easily just pokes through all the way and depending how thick is your yarn or your uh, your twine it might be a little hard to pull through if it's too felted um, but it usually goes really easily so it's just going through just like that all right so you can see here just went through there again the same thing we can fix that later and of course that you have in mind like which one's gonna be your first or your last um, to create the sentence and the message you want to be uh, of course the axe all the axe is the first and then I just go and do the same process with um, with the O which is the other flag all right just pulling through and the good thing about this process uh, if you need to add more or if you need to move to create a gap between them as long or as short as you want it to be it's just an easy way to do it because they move around the thread and it's really easy to work with so that's how you add it and you can see it's very clean on the sides on the back and in the front um, and I feel that it, it gives a nice finishing to it and um, I guess before we go, i um, also going to leave some time here to see if you have any questions. But another way to also fix, especially if there is a, such a contrasting color with this guy here, is just putting a little extra on top just to build up here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start first just to kind of like a, trying to make the dark color back to um, not back completely back to the other side but again just the 45 degree angle is fine and if you feel that it's still a little bit um, a residue there especially with contrasting colors like this uh, what we can do just grab a little bit extra there and just uh, again be careful not to poke like it too straight because the grain again will go through and you will kind of mess it up with the front but with that it's just a simple way and it's kind of just uh, as fast as you can see here and then you make like a clean and nice um, edge just a clean and nice back I'm sorry all right, so um, if you guys don't have any questions, um, don't forget to take your template if you like to try at home. Uh, materials are very simple. Um, if you have any, any fiber shop around, uh, you can get it. If you're in Canada, uh, you can contact me. We have those kits with everything you needed to create. Um, the bunting uh, flag you can probably get out of 20 flags with our kit so now you know how to make those you can make as many bunting flags as you like and um yeah and uh if you also um if you're interested in classes or if you're interested in free content don't forget to subscribe we will be doing this more regularly uh, not in a live section. We'll try to make a live section at least once a month, but uh, we'll be posting uh, tutorials and They will be available for you at any time If you're in Canada if you need any supplies, don't forget to uh, To check us out our website to have all the materials and all the tools that we use today um, I hope you enjoy this uh, this demo this Valentine's Day uh, special 
and I hope you have a great Valentine's Day tomorrow. And um, I will see you soon.